Hello folks, Pete here and I've got a really cool video for you about the update 1.4 for Luminar AI. So Luminar AI, as you may know, it's one of my favorite Lightroom and Photoshop plugins and it also acts as a standalone application by the way so it in a way it can also act as an alternative to Lightroom and to a lesser degree to Photoshop I think but so there is a new update out it's a free update for existing Luminar AI customers and it's a very cheap paid upgrade for anybody who's still using Luminar 4 and by the way if in under this video you will see more information on how to upgrade to Luminar AI or how to purchase it if you're a new customer and you like what you see in this video. So I'm not going to go too much in depth about all the features of Luminar AI. I think I will do a webinar in a couple of weeks that you know covers Luminar AI as a whole but in this case I want to focus on the long-awaited new feature that's in this update and that's the Ported Bokeh AI which basically lets you change your depth of field after the fact. So you cannot increase your depth of field after the fact. Now that would also be something most of us don't want. Actually the reason why a lot of photographers lug around super heavy super expensive lenses is to have more shallow depth of field not less of it and that's one thing that Portrait Book AI lets you do on portrait images. That's one important thing to bear in mind. It only works as of now on portrait images. Now, in order to have a good appreciation of what this actually means, of how, how easy Skylum, the maker of Luminar, has made it, let me show you a quick, well, not so quick, but let me show you how you normally have to blur the background of an image. So I will quickly send this image over to uh, Photoshop and I will just show you the traditional way without Ported Bokeh AI to blur a background. And don't worry if you don't quite understand it because that's exactly my point. The Photoshop way of doing this is very complicated and you need to be a little bit of a Photoshop wizard to do it. This is definitely not something for a Photoshop novice to do. So what I would do, and there's plenty of ways probably, but what I would do is first to select my subject, right? I would save this as a new uh, channel, okay? And I'm not going to explain everything because again the point is to show you that you don't need to know all of this anymore because of the new features in Portrait Bokeh AI. Now if I would just blur everything but my subject that wouldn't be realistic obviously because the, the, the beach right under her hands would also be blurred where in the normal blur that wouldn't happen. So I need some way to tell Photoshop that it should not blur her but also not blur any of the foreground that is close to her and it should progressively blur the rest of the image more towards the background and the way you do that is by creating a so-called depth map. Now um, I'm gonna create a new blank alpha channel here and I'm gonna use the foreground to background gradient to create my depth map. Now for example I'm going to drag a gradient like this and I'm going to actually invert it and now everything that's white will not be blurred, everything that's black will be blurred and everything in between will gradually be blurred. Now obviously we need to factor in our subject as well so I'm going to hit command shift to load that model as a selection and then I am going to um, fill this with white. Actually I could have just command clicked probably. Okay and now I'm gonna rename this as depth map. All right good so now I can actually duplicate my background layer and now another important thing is you don't want to use the Gaussian blur filter because that looks fake. You want to use the lens blur filter found in the blur category and now the trick is simply to set a depth map which in this case is our depth map and then just increase the radius and as you will see 
I'm gonna do it all the way to the max. If I now, this is before, this is after. So you see it nicely and gradually blurred the background, but because of that trans, that graduated mask that I drew, this area here gets progressively blurred and then this is completely blurred and this area which was white in my depth map from here to here isn't blurred at all. So this is the Photoshop way of doing it. So even an experienced Photoshop user would probably take five minutes to do this. And this is a fairly simple example because imagine that there's maybe a tree sticking out here, then you would actually also have to select the tree and all that stuff, right? So now let's look at the Luminar AI approach. So there is a new tool in Luminar AI, it's called Portrait Bokeh AI. And in Luminar, it's really just as simple as dragging the amount slider, and I'm gonna, for demo purposes, drag it all the way to the right. And you see, I did exactly the same thing with one slider. How incredibly cool is that, right? So now it gets even better because there's a lot of extra control. Often you won't need it, but it's there if you need it. For example, there's brushes to paint in or paint out areas that, you know, the AI might have missed. There's um, also additional background control. And for example, one cool thing is, suppose I want to change the depth of field. Actually, I want to the blur to start happening closer um, to her, right? In Photoshop, I would actually need to um, calculate or drag a new depth map then combine it with my alpha channel again with her selection and then run the lens blur filter again. So it's, it's quite time consuming to change, your, to change your mind. In Luminar, it's just a matter of dragging the depth correction slider. In this case, if I drag it to the left, you see, I in, increase the fall off. Now, obviously I, I can overdo it where to the point where it doesn't look real. Now this here she's floating on her hands. That's not real, obviously. But like anywhere where the, the depth only the depth only starts to happen after the point where her hands meet the surface is good. So I can do either this or I can put the depth further to the back. So you have two ways to control the the, the strength of the effect, the, the amount slider and then the depth correction slider, right? What you can also do is change while you're at it the, the brightness. You can darken the sky and the background, for example, to further emphasize your subject. You can play with the hue, with, with, with the warmth. Uh, you can also, um, but that's more for lenses or backgrounds with real, nice, that's already a little bit out of focus. You can play with the highlights glow and stuff like that. So again, a really, I think, super cool feature. Now, let me show you um, an, another example, and that's this one here. And like here, for example, and again, the point of this is not that I think we should all put our fast lenses on eBay, because I think that if you do it, in camera, it's always gonna be the best possible quality, obviously, and it's certainly gonna be quicker. But there are those instances where you might be using a travel zoom lens, which doesn't have the, the super fast aperture that your regular telephoto has, but you didn't bring it on, on your holiday. Or maybe you don't have the budget to buy those really super expensive um, fast prime lenses. Or maybe you just shot something on your iPhone or your another smartphone, which does have a more pronounced depth of field, right? So any reason is good for me, right? So in this case, for example, the background, I like it, but it's a bit busy. So in order to bring out the, the mother and the child a little bit better here, we can again use our um, portrait, uh, bokeh AI and the trick I think here is not to overdo it and I just want to point you to a like this is for Facebook use is it's perfect but if you like if you zoom in literally and figuratively you will see and that's typical that's also what Photoshop select subject often does is that the fine detail 
often gets blurred a bit like here in the hair. And you know, that's what sometimes makes these things look a little bit less realistic. Now, I'll actually, next week, I'll do a video, a follow-up video, to show you how you can get rid of it in either Luminar itself or by combining Luminar and Photoshop. But um, for now, I, I don't want to go too far and I want to have something to say next week as well. But suffice to say that this is already a pretty advanced example. So um, overall, I think the effect is really impressive. For example, um, let's look at another, another example here. Um, but this is an, another interesting example, actually. For example, here in the Portrait Bokeh AI. So if you do the amount slider, and again, I'm going to do it all the way to 100, what it will do is it will, and obviously that, that you see it makes a, a really great mask of our subject. It really nicely blurs the background. But in this case, because it, it found these people, it lets them relatively sharp. And obviously that's not what we want. You, you might want that, but that's not what I want. So what you can do is, and this is where those brushes come in handy, you can actually click on the defocus brush and then you can tell Luminar to, you know, that you don't want it to keep these elements in the frame sharp, but that you really only want the woman in the foreground to be sharp. Now I'm going to do it quickly here. I would actually have to pay a little bit more attention to it, obviously. But this way you see that now these people are blurred in a way that really focuses on our subject here. But again, the, the difficult transition of the hair, it's all done very nicely and I'm going to show you an advanced technique um, probably next week on how you can take it even uh, a couple of steps further. You can you have control over the, the darkness, the brightness of the background. Let's see what the depth correction here does. If I bring it a little bit closer, it actually blurs them even more. So all in all, I think this is a really cool update. Now, um, again, just one to, to, to finish off um, here. Let me reset this. Oh, this is the original uh, already, I think. Okay, so for example, here, again, the software automatically discovers the, the human figure and the backpack, which is also quite important. So if we increase the amount here, again, all the way up to 100, look at how beautifully and organically that blur gets added. And this is where this highlights glow feature comes in handy. If you already have a little bit of a highlight in your background, then this slider lets you enhance that. Now, again, it's easy to go overboard. I just show you the extreme effect, but obviously you need to go to 100 to make it that easy. And again, look at how well the, the hair is being masked. It even finds the, the little spot here uh, between the arm. Um, so that's all really good. Now, I want to leave you with another new feature that's actually about um, the uh, another one of Luminar's strong selling points, and that is for landscape photographers. That's the fact, and that's already been in there for quite a while, the fact that you can change the sky in an image very quickly, and that's with the sky AI feature. So there's been, this has been around ever already in Luminar 4, but it's been consecutively enhanced in Luminar AI. And for example, one of the recent enhancements is the fact that you have previews of your sky. Now, the big main feature in this Luminar AI update 4 is the fact that you have more control over your sky placement. For example, you can position your horizon really at the horizon, which makes that the reflections will also be very realistic. For example, let me um, first defocus that sky a little bit. And then if I play around now, for example, with my 
position of my sky, you see, for example, this here is a reflection of this white streak here. So if I play with this, the actual reflection here in the lake also uh, changes. If I play with my horizontal position, for example, this here is the reflection of this here. So if I play around with that, you can actually see that move. So that's become, I would say, a lot better, a lot more realistic. There's also a way now to play with the water blur in your uh, reflection. So you can make the reflection of your clouds look more or less blurred. So anyway, that's it for this short tutorial on the main new features in Luminar AI Update 4. If you want to have access to it, so if you're an existing Luminar AI user, this is a free update. It is the last of the free promised updates of Luminar AI in this current version. If you're a Luminar 4 user, there is currently a discount and you can see more of the details in the blog post in which you're actually seeing this video. So somewhere above or below this video, there's currently a way to upgrade for something around $40, which is really dirt cheap if you ask me for this app that's so, so strong, has got so much potential. Also, don't forget that Luminar 4 and AI are separate applications, so you can continue to use them separately if you want to, in the sense that if there's something missing in AI that is still in 4, you can use 4 for that, and if for all the rest you can use AI, so that's perfectly possible. And also if you're a new user and, and you think, hey, this Luminar seems like a really cool uh, piece of software, which it is, then the, the cheapest way to purchase a new license is to follow the links again in the page where you're watching this video. And I've got a discount code for you, which is more than words. And if you add that uh, upon checkout, you save an additional $10 or, dollar or euro. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll keep you posted if I do that bigger webinar on Luminar AI in its entirety. Thanks for watching, happy holidays, and bye-bye.